quicksand writing. In the super rare instance that life gets between you and your craft. This is me, Jared Kwan. Okay, this is me, actually. <laughs> I mean, that's me in my youth. I'm gonna do something that I've been told not to do the entire time that I've been doing presentations at conferences for the last, I don't know, six or seven years. I'm gonna talk about myself before I dive into everything. And it's partially because of the subject matter we're gonna be talking about. Now I know, it's not important for you to know, I'm five foot, nine and a half. My son will probably tell you that I'm really actually five foot nine. <laughs> My weight, 295 pounds, which is actually remarkable. It used to be 370. Hair color black, eye color brown. Most importantly for you to note, uh, I need corrective lenses to exist in the world. So if there's a, a zombie apocalypse tomorrow, and I don't have glasses or contacts, and I'm the one holding the gun, then we are all doomed. <laughs> no, really what I wanted to mention, of course, growing up, I was an ROTC, found my amazing wife, Lisa, who supports me to this day. And of course, I had five kids because that's what everybody does. And that's my office. A lot of things going on there. Very busy. I know. Lots of awards, decorations, accomplishments, different things in there. From books I've published, short stories I've published, to awards from presidents of the United States, or even the governor of Utah. Lots going on there. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be on Writing Excuses podcast here at LTUE. And, yep, I'm a part of TEDx Salt Lake City. Actually, I'm a part of five nonprofit boards, or it was at one point, all at the same time. Different conferences, different events, different things going on. Now, you might be asking yourself, why is this important? Why would I break the one rule everybody told me not to break going into this presentation? And it's pretty simple. So everything that you see going on there, I've I managed to accomplish a lot. But I've also had a lot of challenges. Uh, my first son was born and his esophagus wasn't attached to his throat, uh, to his stomach. My second son was born and he only had two chambers in his heart. I've been fortunate that I have, you know, our kids are, are fairly healthy and hopefully happy right now, but we've had to deal with our fair share of quicksand in life and not everybody has the same kind of burdens not everybody has the same kind of problems but what I'm going to share with you are ways that I've managed or learned how to do things that I think could really help you out so let's talk about that let's talk let's get into it right <clears throat> So here's our table of contents. Here's the things we're going to be learning. We're going to learn not to panic. Don't panic. <laughs> Recognize and avoid quicksand when you can. Can't always avoid quicksand. How to work in quicksand. How to get out of quicksand. How to uh, help others in quicksand. Then rinse and repeat. Let's dive in. Don't panic. This is probably the most important rule and you probably know this. Anybody who talks about things like quicksand or uh, bad situations, they tell you don't panic. And my advice to you, don't panic. I know. It's not as simple as it sounds, but in reality, you just got to keep thinking to yourself, don't panic. <laughs> I know. I know. It's a lot to take in. But don't panic. Whatever you do, don't panic. Most importantly of all, do not panic. Panicking in quicksand is how you sink faster. It's how things get out of control and it becomes incredibly tough to move on and move past those situations. So, don't panic. Whew, now that I've got that out there, that one piece of advice, don't worry, we'll come back to how to avoid <laughs> panicking. 
Let's talk about first recognizing and avoiding quicksand. What does quicksand look like? Um, of course, that's not quicksand. That's a river. But there's there could be quicksand nearby. The key is to be on the lookout. Be very conscious of events that are going to happen or could happen. And that will help you uh, recognize when you're about to step into it and you can't avoid it. Or when you're in it. Sometimes you're in the middle of quicksand and you don't even re realize it till somebody points it out to you. So recognize and avoid because sometimes you can completely avoid quicksand. So let's talk about unique versus everyday. Everyday quicksand is <clears throat> a situation like flat tire. Everybody gets a flat tire at some point in their life. Dead battery in their car. I recently experienced that myself. Another everyday might be the power goes out. Um, your internet fails, right? Everyday quicksand has a variable cornucopia of things that can happen. But they happen every day to people all over the place, all the time. Now, unique quicksand looks like something that's very personal to you. Very, it seems like customized just for you. My unique quicksand are my situations like my son being born with his esophagus not attached to his stomach. My son born with only two chambers in his heart. My daughters and their unique challenges. Those are unique. Now, when I say unique, I don't mean nobody else has those same challenges. But it seems like you have your own set of challenges that are unlike challenges everybody else has. And that's okay. That's actually really good. And it's very healthy. If we all had the exact same problem at the same moment, there'd be other stresses, other things that could be going wrong. So it's okay. But you got to recognize it. You got to recognize what that looks like. Now, being in a situation, for instance, like my son being born with only two chambers in his heart, though it's a unique kind of quicksand, a situation where where we're stuck in it and we're, we have to live with it and we got to work around it. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It teaches us some valuable lessons, helps us appreciate things, helps us recognize resources. Having unique challenges isn't a bad thing or everyday challenges. But you got to recognize when you're in those challenges and recognize those everyday challenges, right? you got to review past experiences of your own and others. Now, when it comes to um, situations, <clears throat> for you it might be a battery failed on you when you really needed to get to a job interview. Your internet failed and you work from home. Those experiences are powerful because you experienced them and you got past them. <laughs> now, some of those you got past with ease, some with great difficulty, but the key is to actually review and learn from that experience. And that means really evaluating. What could you have done better? Uh, how did you handle it? Was it the best way? If you had certain resources, would it have made it easier for you? Think about those things. Those are the things that will help you um, progress and actually avoid uh, quicksand in the future. Recently, uh, when I was changing jobs, the internet went out here in Eagle Mountain, Utah. And it was down for an entire day. But I was in the middle of training. Now, I was very fortunate because I had a hotspot on my phone. So I was able to utilize that when that came up. And I got past it. Well, then just a month later, the internet went down again. And I was able to switch back to my hotspot. I knew instantly. I didn't have to think about it. I didn't have to try and figure it out. Now, the first time when I was in training and the internet went down, I didn't remember I had a hotspot. I was kind of panicking. I had a lot going through my mind. And I was talking with my wife. And she's like, hey, just use your hotspot. Of course. But the second time it came up, I instantly switched to my hotspot. There was no delay. I was right on top of it. So learn from your past experiences. But you also have to learn from experiences of others. That's just as powerful. That's why I love biographies and autobiographies. 
I love learning about the challenges other people went through and how they overcame them. What they would have done differently. What could they have done in... Uh, if you were in their, in their shoes, their situation is just as important. Now, you got to recognize control and uncontrollable <laughs> quicksand. Uncontrollable quicksand, car hits a telephone pole or hits a, a, a pole and knocks out the power. You can't control that. You really can't. That's out of your control. It's something that was going to happen. Versus control, where you elected not to pay the power bill and the power went out. That was fully within your control. <laughs> control versus uncontrollable. There are certain things you can do to protect yourself from uncontrollable events. If it happens often that somebody hits the power and your internet goes down or your power goes out, then a backup generator or a hotspot those are things that you can make those situations more manageable, but you can't control when those things are happening. Still dealing with an uncontrollable situation, but you handled it with the wisdom you learned from your past experiences or the experiences of other people. So you got to recognize the quicksand, recognize the situation and, and uh, learn from them so you can avoid it the next time. When the, Wi-Fi went down for me. I switched to the hotspot. I really avoided a quicksand, a quagmire, a, a bad situation with my job. I was able to avoid that altogether because of what I learned. So that's just as important. Okay, let's talk about how to work in quicksand. Because let's face it, life happens to every single one of us. And we're all going to end up in quicksand at one point or another. Or some of us are just stuck in quicksand for our whole lives. And that means challenges that are very stressful that we have to deal with personally for ourselves or others around us for long term. So we have to deal with that and work and continue to function in those situations. So that's why this is vital. This is what's really important. Now, what you might capture from these pictures here, the classic card catalog and the time turner. So obviously what I'm suggesting is you find a time turner, go back to the 80s when life was simpler. <laughs> no, I definitely am not uh, recommending that. <clears throat> but from those four words off to the side, plan, prepare, execute, and adjust. These are the things that I'm going to really hit on because through these, these four things, then you're able to uh, survive and thrive in uh, quicksand situations. So organize first. You're in quicksand. The very first thing you need to do is get yourself organized. And you do that using uh, certain tools like time tracking tools. Now you might utilize something like Trello or OneNote, Word, um, shared calendars. Um, for me, I use Trello. I actually have a shared calendar with my wife. So when there's a doctor's appointment for my son to follow up with the transplant team, it's on the calendar. I know. Or if I'm teaching a class at a conference, she knows where I'm at. Right? We're shared. We're on the same page. We know what's going on. That helps us organize the situation so we can manage it. Now, you got to set yourself some reminders. And that could be putting something on the calendar, <laughs> putting a, a time deadline in a tool like Trello, which will email you a reminder or um, just an alarm. Maybe once a day, you need to be reminded to sit down and write. That's okay. Create bite-sized goals. So your goal might have been to run a marathon and you got stuck in some real quicksand, something deep, a big problem, something you can't just avoid. For me, over the long term, that was, of course, my son having his heart condition. When, when we went to primary children's and they pulled us into the side room, which, by the way, if they ever pull you into a side room, that's when you know things are getting serious. The doctors broke it to us. They said that we had three options. We could move to Colorado or Denver to be on a wait list for a heart transplant for an infant, which they said was 
very difficult. And we didn't have any family there. The second was to undergo three surgeries and then eventually a heart transplant. And the third option was to do nothing. Uh, so it was hard because we needed to know what, what the odds were. We needed to know. And the doctors told us that the three surgeries and the heart transplant, there was seriously only a 10% chance of survival. This hit us really hard. This created a quicksand we could never have imagined. We knew nobody in a situation like that. And we didn't know what to do. <clears throat> My goal at that time before we discovered was to write a book. I was in the process of writing a book. I wanted to finish that book in a very short time. When we discovered the situation with my son and he needed to have a surgery immediately, I immediately switched to bite-sized goals. Okay, instead of you know, getting five pages done by this date, I needed to have one page or half a page. Whatever was going on, I planned it out. I gave myself goals that were attainable given the circumstances. That would help me continue to move forward have something to look forward to, and give me a little victories, which was just as important. Now, you're in quicksand. You've got a lot going on. It seems easy to be out of time because problems are building up or you're in problems that seem to be occupying your time all the time. When it came to my son, when uh, he after he had his first surgery and he came home, he required 24-hour care at home. Um, so there was a situation where my wife would watch him for 12 hours and then I would watch him for 12 hours. But during this little window, my wife and I got to spend a little bit of time together while we watched him. That was really rough. And during that time, it was tough because we had to monitor his sats and things going on. Plus administer, administer uh, medications so we couldn't be... Just distracted. We needed to be knowing what was going on. So we had to create time. And you have to create time when you're in situations like that. So you think to yourself, how do I create time when it seems like all the time is used up in the day? Well, first of all, you got to schedule. You just have to. And that might be scheduling just five minutes, to be honest. Or maybe just start with scheduling five minutes for yourself or for you to write for you to work on your project. Start with little bits. See what you can do in that short amount of time. I know, it doesn't seem like that much. Five minutes might be a sentence. Who knows, maybe you've been thinking about it all day and five minutes is actually a paragraph. Once you schedule that five minutes, once you start working on it, kind of move it up a little bit, six minutes, seven minutes, just adjust it. But you need to schedule, put it out there for yourself. Get it uh, on your calendar. Have it set where you can have it set. Then you need to manage your time. And what I mean by manage is there's a lot of things going on. It could be really frantic and really hectic. But we also have a way of filling moments with distractions. Now, distractions are important. Trust me, as a Twitch streamer myself, right? Uh, distractions, I think, are vital to uh, healthy mental health. But we don't need distractions quite as much as we're good at creating. <laughs> so you need to manage the distractions. Manage those so that you still have those time and, and again, but that you also offset some of those with productive times for yourself. And then utilize your resources. Now, this is one of those things that a lot of people actually uh, have a tar hard time doing. And it's partially because they don't know what resources they have, to be honest. But the key is to uh, utilize your resources. And that means calling on friends or family or loved ones, um, calling in favors sometimes. Sometimes utilizing a resource might be 
uh, spending a little bit of money um, where you didn't foresee it. Now, uh, utilizing a resource might be that you um, only have one computer and you have two kids that do online school. They dominate the computer. Got it. Totally understand. I've actually been there, done that exact same thing. The key is to then go, okay, I can utilize my resource so that um, at certain times, even you are scheduled to give yourself 30 minutes to work on your project, on your one computer. Maybe it's after they go to bed. Maybe it's first thing in the morning. Maybe it's when they're eating lunch, right? You've got to manage that resource. Utilize the resource, though. I've heard so many times where people are like, have situations and it's hard for them to see how to utilize their resources. Um, and that typically comes when there are friends and family who are willing to help out, but they're not quite sure what they could call on them to do. Uh, but you don't know what they can do. And some friends and family, you do know what, what kind of resources. They could babysit your kids or come over and watch your uh, kids at your place uh, or... Um, give you a ride someplace, doing different things. Now, of course, there's a fine line between utilizing a resource and abusing it. You've got to make sure that you're very conscious of other people and their needs as well, and that you're not um, just occupying all their time for yourself. You know what I mean? <laughs> we've, we've all kind of been there sometimes. Manage your resources um, and use your resources. And most importantly, and you'll see this, I say this often, communicate. Oh, Communicate, communicate. You need to communicate with everybody. Communicate with your friends, with your family, with your spouse, everybody. People you work with. Communicate by helping them understand the situation you're going through. And that's different than complaining. I'm not saying go out there and complain. I'm like, just let them know. Things are going on. You're a little bit stressed. You got a lot on your mind. You know, it might be uh, communicating um, what your goals are. Say, I, I really want to accomplish this by the end of the week, by the end of the month. Uh, I want to do NaNoWriMo, um, and I have this huge thing going on. Communicate with everybody. Um, communicating also does a couple of things. There are so many times where we set goals or things for ourselves, and we kind of internalize them. We just make them in our mind to ourselves, and then if we fail them, then we're like, ah, well, nobody else knew about it, so... Not a big deal. I'm not the only one out there who has made a commitment to lose weight at the beginning of a year. And then I didn't tell anybody. And then a couple of weeks in, I'm like, eh, I'm okay. I've done pretty good. And I failed my goal. But there's nobody there to help uh, either achieve my goal or hold me accountable. To just remind me. Just little nudges. Hey, you can do it. You can accomplish it. Let me help you. None of that can happen unless you communicate with people. So you got to do that just as much as everything else. Communicate. People are not mind readers. People don't understand situations. And by the way, social media is not communicating. Communicating is having discussions with people. Communicating is is texting, is calling, is talking to people face-to-face -face when you can, right? But you got to communicate so that they can understand what you're going through and what you want to accomplish. Let's do this together, right? Makes life much easier. Okay, how to get out of quicksand. Now, not all quicksands can get... You, you can't just climb out of any kind of quicksand, right? Uh, my son with his surgeries and his heart transplant, like I couldn't just get out of that quicksand. Um, so I'm talking about the quicksands you can get out of, the situations that you're uh, starting to sink in that you can really control. There's things you can do to get out of that. Okay, first of all, if you're in quicksand, you got to calm yourself first. Um, that's part of that don't panic, right? If you get into quicksand, don't panic. Okay, calm. You got to bring peace to your mind. That will help you think of solutions and uh, resources and come up with good plans. Now, I do this, of course, with music. I actually have 
a playlist set aside for just stress relieving. And I recommend that you take a few minutes every day and listen to a couple songs from maybe your stress relieving playlist. If you don't have one, create one. There's a lot of free music services out there that will still let you customize a playlist. Meditation is vital. It's super important. I've learned this from a good friend of mine who has a a bell that rings on her phone to remind her to take a moment. And in just taking a breath, she kind of just meditates for a moment. Just a... And it gives her a beat, which is that third piece there. Meditation can be anything from prayer. It could be just listening to music. It could be just walking outside and breathing for a moment. It could be driving around. I know many people who driving around is actually like a, a form of meditation because it really, their, their, their mind knows to focus on driving and it melts everything else away from them for that moment. But you got to give yourself that beat. You got to calm down, get into the zone. Let yourself start thinking about solutions instead of the problems, which is great. Now, I love this analogy, right? When you get into an airplane, one of the things they tell you is if the uh, air, the oxygen is deployed, put on your own oxygen first before helping others. If you're not breathing, then you're in real trouble. <laughs> so is the so is the person you're trying to help. So calm yourself. Give yourself a moment. You deserve it, first of all. Take a beat. Put on your oxygen. And then move forward. Okay. Now you're calm. Now you're in a good place. So let's start working on this. Triage your situations. You need to start seeing uh, and evaluating and prioritizing. Now, and that sounds easier than it really is. Uh, what happens is when we panic, when there's a lot going on, a lot of a lot of crisis, one thing goes wrong, another thing goes wrong, another thing goes wrong. The third thing might be the least thing that goes wrong. But because it's the most recent, you're like, well, I, let, let's deal this thing right in front of me right now. And it's not high on the list. And it doesn't really need your attention right that moment. But we want to react to it because we're very reactive people. So when you're calm, you need to actually triage the situation. You got three things going wrong. Which one is the most priority? Which one can you work on right now? Right? Then you need to create a plan of action. So for me, uh, I had a situation where my car battery died. I have two vehicles. I'm very fortunate. But my car battery died in the one vehicle. And which has happened to everybody. But I discovered that in order to change the battery of my car, I had to take my tire off my driver's uh, side tire, then take out the wheel well, and then take off the components that were holding the battery in, then replace the battery, and then put everything back. Which So this was a very time-intensive piece, on top of discovering that my battery is actually kind of pricey. So I'm like, oh my goodness. So um, I was in the middle of a lot of things going on at that moment. Right when my car battery died. My car battery died actually uh, right at the same time that my son went in for his heart transplant. Right? Uh, ended up coming down with COVID. <laughs> right? Uh, you know, my uh, daughter who was in cheerleading still, um, when she was cleared, needed to get to cheerleading. We needed to get back up to the hospital to see my son. So, like, I had, like, Multiple things going on at the same time. The car battery dying. I'm like, where does that even fit? In the situation. Time intensive. Expensive. My brain really wanted to push that to the bottom of the list. Of important things. In reality, it was one of the more important things. Now, of course, my son comes first. Right? But functioning in the family with one vehicle was just not tenable. I needed to make a change. Really, I needed to have a plan of action uh, for recognizing the situation. So after everything started going down and everything was going crazy, I was able to triage the situation, evaluate where things were at, and prioritize. Okay, this needs to come first, this comes second, this comes third. And then I had to create a plan. Okay, my plan for my car um, 
was to actually uh, take some money I'd been setting aside for, um, uh, well, for Christmas, <laughs> to take some of that money aside and buy that battery. That was more important. I get that done. And I had to block out the time to change that battery. I had to learn how to do it. I had to suck it up. And I had to get it done. And when I did, it was a game changer having the two vehicles back. Suddenly, my wife could take my son to the hospital for his appointments. And I could take my daughter to cheerleading. And I could make sure that the kids were all taken care of. And if there was an emergency, we had two vehicles to handle the situation. That was a big deal. I had a plan and got over it. But the key is to not panic when things continue to get worse. Panicking makes things worse, actually. Spins out of control, and you start to reach out and grasp for solutions. And it, it can create really bad situations and even bad relationships. It can start to it cause bad things to happen. So you got to not panic when you're when things are going wrong. Things are going crazy. They seem to be spinning out of control. Grab a hold of it, right? Uh, evaluate, prioritize, create that plan of action, right? I can never stress that enough. Make sure you're communicating, right? But make sure you're calm while you're doing it. Make sure you're thinking of that nice, beautiful blue sky and the ocean and that cute cloud out there. That's going to be very helpful to move forward. Okay. So you got out of quicksand, got my battery fixed on my car. Time for me to help others in quicksand, others in situations. This to me is actually one of the most important things I could do. One of the most important things I can recommend to people. It's vital that you help as many people as you can, not only for just making a better world, but those people, all of them, when they get moments, we'll do whatever they can to ensure you succeed. Heck, I want to make sure you succeed. I would love for everyone watching this video to absolutely succeed. If, the, if there was a way I could help them, if I had the time and resources, I'll do whatever I can, right? Everybody deserves to win. It's not a competition where only one person wins. We're, we do this together. Okay. So yeah, right there. We do this together. We're all in this together. We're all in the same, the same ball, the same rock, right? <clears throat> Third rock from the sun. We're all in this together. So let's act like it, right? Instead of acting adversarial sometimes or standoffish or letting silly things get in the way, opinion or thoughts or um, just random stuff. It's time to move past that and help each other. That's the only way we're going to make everything a better place. Right? First of all, never assume. People are in situations. People are in bad situations. Right? People are in situations where they're really stressed. They're in quicksand. But never assume that they need your help to be saved. Right? Never make that assumption. It's super important because it will hurt people's feelings if you assume you want to be respectful of them and their time because you love them. Really, that's really why you want to help them out. But don't assume that it's you who's going to save them from whatever is going on. But at the same time, it's super important to talk with them, to communicate, right? I'll hit that note like, I don't know, a dozen times. Communicate. I never stress that enough. Look at that. Communicate. By communicating, by letting them know that you care, that you're there for them, that you want to help if there's an opportunity, that's important. One of the hardest things, and going through my son's heart transplant, dozens and dozens of people said, let me know if I can do anything. And I'm going to be honest, that's super hard. That's, um, I don't know... What is too much to ask from somebody? I don't know what is enough. I don't know. Right? And you're asking me to pick from a laundry list of things that I don't know. 
So saying, let me know if there's anything I can do, is good. I recommend you say that, but I recommend you add a few things. What I love to do is when somebody's in stress or in distress, I say, look, let me know if there's anything I can do for you. And then I say, I love to make brownies. If you just need something to take your mind off, I can bring you some brownies. I make a mean chicken casserole. My kids won't eat it, but I love it. (laughs) Or if you just need somebody to talk to, let me know. I would love to chat. Just those few things are such a stress reliever. Sometimes people just need somebody to listen to them. And one of the hardest things I think I've realized um, being married is that I'm definitely not right about everything. I definitely can't fix everything. And that's taught me to be a better listener. My wife has been so patient with me. <laughs> but the key is everybody has problems Don't just try to jump in and solve them. But it's okay to make suggestions. Um, It's okay to, oh, you know, that's just listen to them. Acknowledge them. Let them know that you're there for them. That's super, super vital. That can sometimes give them the hope to get out of the quicksand, to give them the energy they need to move on and keep going. Because we all know life is stressful. (laughs) so just communicate let them know you love them you want to be there for them and then you assist in whatever you can help with now you can't do everything for everyone right i kind of wish i were a billionaire but at the same time i wish i was not a billionaire i think there were some fun things i would do there's a lot of people i would help but i could not ever help enough people I just would never be able to help enough people because I want to help everybody. And when you stretch yourself too thin, then you're not helping anybody, right? You got to pick and choose, but you got to assist when you can. Let's make this a better world, right? Better community. Okay. It's funny. Look at that. Look at that right there. I know that's a shock. Communicate, rinse and repeat, because we know, once again, life will constantly be throwing stuff at us. There's no silver silver bullet to avoid everything. So, got to be prepared. So, let's get into this. Review, learn, share, and record. Learn your lessons. It's funny to say this, but I have a good friend who has actually gone into the same situation two or three times. Good friend of mine. Love him to death. Two or three times. Exact same situation. Uh, And then every time I talk to him, I'm like, well, what about, I mean, like, so sorry to hear that, of course, first of all. Wow, you know, maybe try something different next time? No, I don't say it like that. The key there is to first learn from my lessons But sometimes it's to let people learn from their lessons, too. They need to learn. They need to go through some things sometimes to understand. But you need to learn your lesson. Learn from the lessons that you've, from what you've gone through. Make sure that you go back and think through it. What could I do better? If I had different resources, what would have improved? How could I get those resources? Are they practical? And then share. And when I say share, once again, I'm not saying complain. Don't go on social media and just complain. That's not sharing your lesson. Talk with people. You know, engage with them. Go present a class at LTUE. <laughs> share your lessons with people, the lessons you've learned, so that they can learn those lessons, so that they can see those things for themselves, and then help them move through tough times or situations. That's super big, super huge. Plus share it with your kids or family members. Helps them understand what you've been through. Helps them deal with problems as they come up for themselves, right? Now record things. I don't mean 
like literally turning on like a recorder and recording yourself unless you're presenting at LTUE. What I mean is uh, it's time to go back to doing some journaling the old fashioned way, like with a book and a pen. I know it sounds stressful. It's not stressful. It's not hard. It's not expensive. The dollar, dollar store sells journals and pencils pre-sharpened and they even sell sharpeners. So it's very practical for you to go get a journal for yourself and write in your journal, your experiences. Now, why is this important? Because you won't remember two years from now what was happening to you right this very moment. Now, you might remember big things like I'll always remember when my son got his heart transplant. I may remember that I had to change the battery on my car and that was kind of a traumatic event. I really cut myself up a couple of times doing it, right? But other things I won't remember. I won't remember the stress my daughter needing to go to chair practice. My son needing to get to his doctor's appointment at the same time. Um, that moment where some people around me were sick with COVID. I remember, I'll remember when I had COVID. But it's remembering the small things. It's remembering all the details. That's what, when you can go back and review and read and understand things for yourself, you kind of relearn it. Plus, someday your kids will read that and they'll be able to learn and understand things. There's so much we forget. There's so much that we forget. And that could easily lead us to have people feel like we're ungrateful because we forgot that they did so much for us because we were so stressed. We had so much going on that we forgot later on, years down the road, what they've done for us. It's not about keeping score, but it's about remembering and learning and being grateful. That's important. Okay, so let's adjust. We need to adjust things. We need to adjust our plans what that means is when we have our plans, like what happens if we get a flat tire? You know, start having plans for that stuff. What happens if I have a flat tire? What happens if I have a battery that dies? What happens if my Wi-Fi goes down? What happens if the power goes out? Got to have some plans in place. Do I know where my flashlights are? <laughs> because of my kids, I know where the flashlights are. No, the question is, are the batteries good in those flashlights or have my kids run them down playing with the flashlights? <laughs> Adjust your plans after you've learned so that you can um, avoid the quicksand next time. Get through it. You move past it, right? Adjust your resources. Sometimes your resources weren't enough. Sometimes your resources were abundant and you could share those with others. But oftentimes it means thinking about where your resources, where your things need to be at. So adjust your resources, then adjust your thinking. Now, we automatically learn things from experiences. That's what makes us who we are, right? So we learn, but adjusting your thinking takes another level. It's another step. It's not just thinking, well, what do I do if the power goes out? It, it goes to the, to the next point where you're like, okay, thinking about the different scenarios I could be in when the power goes out. Thinking, how do we get around this? What do we do through this? Not just, it's like, not just planning. It's going to the next step and just actively thinking about it. But don't stress yourself out. Don't be like, what happens if a zombie apocalypse happens tomorrow? To be honest, we're all doomed. <laughs> Uh, we're not in a great place uh, for a zombie apocalypse right now. But you got to adjust your thinking as you move forward. Then keep assisting. You got to look for opportunities to assist people. Continually look for opportunities. Now, obviously, there's no like yellow pages for opportunities. I don't know, yellow pages. That's a thing that existed uh, years ago in the past, a book that had information. Anyhow. Um, look for opportunities. There are friends and family members that you have right now that could really use an assist, but it's hard to pick up because they didn't put it on Facebook, right? They didn't put it on social media. You just need to chat with them. Just check in with them. Just say hi to them. Just see what's going on with them. 
And then there's others around. Now, someday we'll be past we'll be past this COVID stuff. Not soon enough in my in my mind, but some at some point we'll be back together at conferences, talking with each other, enjoy each other's company, make new friends, get to know people. And then help them if you can help them. They want to be there for you. Be there for them. That's, like I said, what's going to make the world a better place. And keep working to help them. Help people in general. In small ways. You don't have to go crazy. I'm not saying that you open your home to, you know, just let a bunch of homeless people live in your house. Or maybe that is for you. The key is keep working at it. Keep helping others where you can. There's just not enough of that in the world these days. There are many people who do, and there are many people who do not help each other enough. When you help each other, then you gain resources. It's hard to think of it that way. When you give, you get. You get a stronger relationship, a stronger friendship, and a fantastic resource who will want to be there to support you if something goes wrong for you. Bam! Communicate. I know, you're shocked. Communicate, communicate. Always communicate. Keep communicating. Nobody can help you. You can help nobody if you don't communicate. We want to be there for you. And we want to help. I know there's not stuff that we can just help. But maybe it's just talking to uh, somebody else. It's crazy how much that can really help relieve a lot of stress and give you the strength to get out of your situation. <clears throat> okay. So what did we learn? We learned don't panic. That's a killer. That gives, leads to more stress. Recognize and avoid quicksand. Start learning from your experiences and the experiences of others so that you can avoid it or get through quicksand super quick. Work in quicksand. Understand that you can work through it. You just got to put a little effort into it by utilizing tools, shortcuts, creating time savers, using things like audiobooks instead of physical books or dictation software to shortcut stuff. Give yourself some time in there. You can work in the quicksand. Get out of quicksand as you can. Right? Come up with a plan. Triage. Let's, let's escape it. Then help each other. Let's help each other so that we can all be together. So we can have people help pull us out and we can help pull others out of their situations and their quicksand. And be prepared because life will bring it at us again and again, over and over again. And we can get through this all together. So I'm going to do something that once again they told me not to do in my presentations since I've started giving presentations. I kind of got to end my video something a little bit different. I want to let you know you got this. Your whole life, you have been working to progress and succeed. Everybody wants you to succeed. You've got this. You've learned so much. You have the strength in you to accomplish anything. You're an amazing person. You're not in this alone. We're in this together. I want to help you. Everybody wants, to, wants you to succeed. And it's weird to think that regardless of their opinions, you know, politically or religiously or anything, we're all on this planet together. We want everybody to succeed. I want you to win. Have hope. This is so powerful. Always have hope. That will light your darkest days. You must have hope even when things seem to be getting out of control. You seem like you're neck deep and the quicksand is rising fast. Have hope. Hope that people will be there for you, that you have the strength. Hope to move on because you can do it. And we want to be there for you. Always have hope. Okay. This is me. Um, if you have any questions or comments or thoughts or just want to chat, let me know. Uh, there's my email, my website, my Instagram, 
my Twitter, my Facebook, my LinkedIn. More recently, uh, my Twitch page. Even if you just need to go someplace and watch somebody play some video games, come join my Twitch channel. I would love to chat with you out there or play a game with you. If you're a gamer, I'd love to connect. I play everything, just so you know. I play anything I can. I'm all about it. I'll race, I'll play Mario, I'll play Call of Duty. <laughs> okay, one caveat, one caveat only. I don't play World of Warcraft. That's the only thing off my books. Uh, I can't remember the two years I did play it, but my wife does. And I'm perma, perma banned from World of Warcraft. But everything else is fair game. I would love to hang out with you on Twitch or just get to know you or help out any way I can. You're an amazing person and you can do this and you can get through the situations that are put in front of you. Everybody's different, but you can do it. I know it. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for checking out my class. I'm super grateful. Um, if you really enjoyed the class, let the conference know. If you did enjoy the class, let me know. I want to improve. I want to make it better for everybody moving forward. Thank you so much again.